Hello, welcome to this Lord of the Flies A Star Study Guide, helping you to achieve the top grade for your GCSE English Literature. In this guide, we're going to focus particularly on the quality of written communication. It's something which often doesn't get taught that heavily to top end candidates because we expect them to be able to do it, but you cannot forget about it because it's right there in the marking criteria for every band, and if it's not good enough, it will limit you from entering band six, however good your response is. Okay, quality of written communication. The examples I'm going to use in this video focus on this question. What is the importance of Ralph in Lord of the Flies? Um, when you're thinking about quality of written communication, you've got to think about a few things. First of all, you've got to remember it's about creating an impression for the examiner. If the examiner looks at your work and it's riddled with errors, then they're immediately going to think, well, this can't be a top-end candidate, this can't be one of the best, because they wouldn't be making these silly mistakes. So you've got to create that impression on the examiner. You've got to think about the structure, what your, what your work actually looks like on the page, how it's laid out, because that can create a strong impression. You've also got to think about SPG, the spelling, punctuation and grammar. That has to be spot on if you want to go for the top end of the mark scheme. Um, and finally, you also need to be thinking about your vocabulary. You need to be making yourself stand out with the words you choose. Okay then, let's look at that example. Remember the question is what is the importance of Ralph in Lord of the Flies? Here's my example answer first of all. Golding uses Ralph as a metaphor for the frailty of civilization. If it rains like when we dropped in, we'll need shelters all right. Golding uses Ralph's insistence on building shelters to show the reader how civilization might bind the boys together, and the word need implies that without this, everything will fall apart. Ralph is angry and sad because he already sees this might not be working. The gist of that answer is very strong. It's focusing on the language of the quotation, it's focusing on the symbolism of the text, and we have a sense of the relationship between writer and reader. So it's a good answer, but it seems chaotic. There's mistakes in there, there's simple errors that we have to rectify. Take a couple of seconds now and see if you can spot what those errors are. Okay, here's the deliberate errors that I've planted. Structure and SPG. Let's see what it looks like if we improve it. Golding uses capital letter on Ralph. There's a missing word there. Golding uses Ralph to as a metaphor. Golding uses Ralph to serve as a metaphor for civilization. This here's a big one. I've dropped my quotation onto its own line. I preceded it, <laughs> dropping my hand off, I preceded it with a colon at the end of my point and my quotation has gone onto a new line so it's clearly structured and laid out. I've got the capital letter on Ralph again, I've got a spelling mistake on insistence. I've then, this sentence here, I've reduced it because it was way too long so I've taken out the end and I've started a new sentence for my word level analysis. That's a great improvement but there's one further simple improvement we can make and we're going to make it down here at the end. Ralph is angry and sad because he already sees this might not be working. The point there is good. However, the way it's expressed lacks sophistication. So we are going to up-level that vocabulary a little bit, and it's going to end up looking like this. That final sentence, Ralph's growing frustration, consternation, and then bitterment at the dysfunctionality of the society is attempting to create, serve to emphasize to the reader the insidious and invasive power of chaos and the darkness of man's heart. I've used a lot of big words there. You maybe don't know what those words mean, but I guarantee you, you have better words than sad and angry. So you have to challenge yourself every time you use a word, particularly in describing a feeling, because that's the ones we have the largest vocabularies for, you have to challenge yourself to use the best word available to you. So we've taken that answer that was riddled with errors and lacked sophistication, and by correcting the structure, the spelling, the punctuation, the grammar, and the vocabulary, we've turned it into a far, far stronger answer, which is heading towards our A star. Okay, quick recap, quality of written communication is a limiting factor. If it's not good enough, you won't hit band six, you will not get your A star. It's all about creating the right impression. The examiner's got to look at your work and think, hell yeah, this guy knows what they're doing. You've got to structure your work appropriately. Make sure the quotation stands out, they can see the structure of your paragraphs and structure within your paragraphs on the page. You've got to get your spelling, punctuation, and grammar right. They've got to be there. Don't be lazy with it. Pay attention to it. Proofread if you have to. Um, and then up-level that vocabulary. Take some risks with some ambitious vocabulary, thinking particularly about characters' feelings, because that's where you're going to have the vocabulary to really lift it up. Good luck in the exam.